Here with Melinda and Anna. I got to tell you, can you believe, Melinda, that we're at the Much Building for another one of these? I just said this is a reunion place. It's been like three in a row, and, and I think this is my final year ever, so I'm glad it's with you. Is it, is it bittersweet? It's so bittersweet. This is my, it feels like my real high school reunion and my like university, like, you know, just graduating it all at the same time in real life. So it is definitely, I, I think I always like tear up when we talk about it being like, this is our last of this. I know, I know, I'm a sap. <laughs> I've like seeing you guys making me cry, so like, don't cry. Oh, you've got, you got a lot of seasons left. That's true, I do. I'm here for a while. <laughs> That's one of the things that I find very interesting about Degrassi in the sense that like I remember teen dramas like from back in the day like Saved by the Bell and whenever they started bringing in new people like nobody liked them like we wanted Zach, we wanted Slater, we wanted Kelly, we wanted Jesse. Degrassi is the only teen drama where I care just as much about you know Imogen as I do about Maya. Why are they so good at transitioning new people in? The writers, our creative team, they are just amazing. Everything goes to them. Of course, the actors on the show are phenomenal, and how could you, how could you not like them? I mean, they make their characters very relatable and likable, and when you get to see them offset, and um, when they're not their characters, you, you just really build a connection with them, and I think that's the most important thing. You were both uh, involved in some pretty intense storylines. I have to tell you, Melinda, I hated Leo. I like literally couldn't even stand the sight of him when he came on, and I was hoping that Dallas would just like pop him in the face and he didn't and do you feel like that would have maybe sent the wrong message like maybe it's better to like talk rather than you know answer with a fist I know filming that we were all like you know what our natural reaction would just obviously to be to do that but an eye for an eye doesn't always make things right and I think it was kind of nice because Dallas was that whole you know he was the temper guy that drinks a lot and he was the teen dad but he took the mature road so I think like that kind of really showed a lot to Ali, in terms of who she's investing her time and who actually cares about her in a good way. If you could pick who Ali ends up with, you know, if we could go back through all of her like conquests of the past, you know, yes, would it be Dave? Would it be Dallas? Who would it be? You know, I think I think this is a really tough one. I think. Because you're going to be upsetting one fan base no matter what you say. No, I can't win. I think over the years, as long as it's not Johnny, everyone's going to be happy. Um, I think. Dallas and her really work well. I think the dynamic between Rocky, his son, and Ali is really cute, and I really love filming with the little boy. He's like hilarious. Um, and I think the fact that they can make it work at that young age seems ridiculous thinking about it, and I'm older. I'm, I would never be able to handle that. So if they can, I think that is a sign that they should stay together, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Your storyline, the trial, I feel like it was super relatable. You know, I saw a lot of tweets from girls saying, oh my gosh, like it's so great that Degrassi is doing this storyline. Have you received a lot of feedback on it? The feedback I've been getting, the reaction, the response has been absolutely mind-blowing um, to, to realize how, how, like you said, how relatable the story is, is quite frightening. And I'm so happy that our show tackles such serious issues like that, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. It's interesting with Zoe's character because she's playing an actor and you're an actor, so do you see a lot of like similarities between the paths that you're both on, or are they two completely different things? They are two completely different things. The path, yeah, <laughs> the path that Zoe was on, I mean, the pill popping, the way that she talks about her experience on West Drive and everything, absolutely nothing like what I've ever experienced. Of course, it's TV, so it's slightly blown up, um, or a lot blown up. Uh, no, I've been, I've had amazing experiences. Melinda, you know, this is going to be funny because I've never said it to somebody as young as you, but I feel like you're the wily veteran of Degrassi now. So do you have, do you have any advice for Anna, like as she continues on this journey? I feel like she's got a few more of these like party in the parking lots in her. I think you just have to really take it all in. I think I've completely grown up on Degrassi. I was just 16 when I started. I moved out of home and now I'm 22. And I'm, you know, moving on with my world. And I think I, I really took it all in. And I appreciated everything, the people, the experiences, the traveling. You just, you really build a bond. I mean, I would run into you off the street and, of course, go over and say hi. But that just wouldn't have happened had we met once. And, you know, but it's just all this repetition. And it's a really great life experience. And I think it's an amazing you know, platform to go off and do whatever you want. So if you take it in, you're really just, you're ready for the world. And, and Anna, I mean, uh, do you feel like you found your groove now? Like everybody knows Zoe, everybody relates to Zoe. 
Do you get that? Like, oh my gosh, it's Zoe. Are you getting that yet? I'm getting that a lot more than I expected I would, um, especially because I look very different from Zoe in, in my real life. Um, but I've gotten notice on the streets. It's very odd. I'm still not used to that. Um, but it, it's so much fun. I love it. <laughs> And finally, if I gave you a blank script and I said, you know, for one episode, you can play any character on Degrassi that's not the one you're playing now, who would you pick? That's tough. Andre's answer was pretty hilarious. Oh, was it? Yeah. I'm not going to tell you until after. Used to <laughs> um, uh, I think it would be cool to play Zig, just because he's the drug dealer and it's like very different, obviously very different from who I am. That would be uh, that would be a very interesting character. Amazing, Melinda. Same question. I think Tristan. He's pretty sassy. He always has really nice, elaborate outfits. He's always coming up with like the "Oh my, Lady Gaga!" like crazy one-liners that I actually carry on in my real life. So I think I would like to pa to carry that on. But Lyle does an incredible job of playing Tristan. <laughs> I wouldn't want anybody else but him. <laughs> and, and finally, what can fans expect as we head into season fourteen? Oof. What can you not expect? Ooh. Well, Zoe's getting a fresh new start for the new term at Degrassi, and um, you, uh, you have to expect the unexpected. Melinda, you can give me a little bit more. You know, we go way back. We go way back. I'll give you something to work with. I mean, it's everyone's graduating. I think it's kind of cool that everyone's not wrapping up their storylines or their worlds or anything, but just kind of coming to themselves as adults and figuring out who they are, who they belong with, who they don't belong with. Um, so there's definitely true to Degrassi nature, lots of tears of joy and definitely of sorrow. So um, yeah, just lots of that. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much.